Hi, I'm Janie Donaldson. And I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm David Martelli. Welcome to Quilt Central. Where we celebrate quilting. And everyday living. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Jacquard Products, committed to meeting the needs of artists. Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. Fairfield Processing Corporation. We care for your quilts. A1 Quilting Machines, A1, Precision Quilting Machines, OFA, the original rotary cutting system, Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, books, and iron-on transfer pins. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson, Cindy Walter, and David Martelli. Our sewing educator, Cynthia Scott, is going to show us a really clever way to make a watch band, but not only that, a gift bag so you can give it to someone. Hi. Hi, Cindy. What Thanks for great. having me today. Well, it's my pleasure because this is a great idea. Well, we're starting with a, a watch and we're replacing the existing band with our fun decorated version using decorative stitches on our sewing machine. Great idea. Ultra suede is the key to this project. We are using up some of the scraps we may have on hand uh, from other projects for this, uh, both the gift bag and the watch band. Yeah, because it doesn't take much, does it? Just no, little it scraps, okay? No. So we start with ironing on paperback fusible web onto the back side of our ultra suede. Then we need to cut the strip to the width of our previous band. Okay, so I noticed here, so this would be the band length right there. Correct. Okay, on this watch you already gave me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we take our strips, and we do need to cut two of them. They should be about 8 to 10 inches long. We'll okay. make them a little bit longer than we need and then trim them down to size. Okay. Uh, then we, after they have been spray basted onto our stabilizer, we then will stitch halfway only down each of the band halves. So we are going to stitch one half only, just like we have here. Okay. Once we've done that, we, we remove the stabilizer, and then we slide the band through the opening on the watch itself, oh, I see. halfway up. And remember, we have our fusible web on there, so we fold it over, and matching our edges, we iron it. Clever, so it's stabilized just by itself and all the extra weight, great. So after we've done that, we can then trim it to size, uh, depending on the, on the person's wrist measurement. And we will then sew with monofilament thread, our Velcro, oh, I see on, on both right, sides. Velcro okay. tabs to complete the closure on the watch. This looks like one for a little kid. It is. It's that's cute. Our, our child's version. And it's matching little bag. And that's matching really bag. cute. Well, for our, our project of the watch I'm wearing, how would you make the bag? Let's see that. Well, here's the finished bag. It's a very e easy uh, project. We start again with a piece of stabilizer and we draw oh. one inch increments with a permanent marking pen to give us our guidelines. We then take our one inch strips that we've pre-cut of our ultra suede and we can stagger them uh, randomly on the, uh, the 10 inch width of to create our bag and use decorative stitches to sew them together. But did you spray baste them down on there first? Yes, I okay. did. Yeah, um, after the, the after this, the um, stabilizer has been gridded, then we go ahead and use our, right. our spray baste. And one thing too, it's a great tip to use up all those scraps, because you always have scraps, but the ultra suede is so expensive. You don't yes. want to waste any of those. So Absolutely. that's a perfect way to use that up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're ready to sew. Right, so what we need to do is, after we've stabilized, um, and we have all those pieces applied with the 
spray adhesive, we pick a decorative stitch that's going to swing on both sides of the, of the seam line. Catch both pieces of fabric. Right? That's right. And I have selected a stitch. I've shortened the stitch length slightly. And I have a, an ultra glide foot on the machine. It works very well. It has a coating on the underside that allows you to uh, use fabrics that might normally stick to a regular grip, foot. Fabrics that grip, like the ultra sway ride. Right. right. So I'm going, going to go ahead and start my stitching. And I'm using the same uh, color thread in the top and the bobbin. And I'm using a decorative uh, polyester embroidery thread on this project. And this project is washable also. So if you, if you use the bag for something and you have a spill or uh, get it dirty, you can, you can wash it. Joker is wild. Yes. This must be your poker theme. This is my Las theme. Vegas theme, okay, yes. Cute. Yes. So when we're all done with that, sew to the end. I'm going to use my, use my scissor. Perfect. Then we have, we remove our stabilizer okay. from the back of it. And uh, we'll go over to here to this piece. Now this one, I've just used decorative stitches. I haven't bothered with piecing. I had a, a In other words, you had piece. a whole piece, a big whole piece. Good, and just cut the size, and there it is. Cut the right. size, and I used decorative stitches to create some visual interest and some variegated thread. That's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. just as pretty if you had a big piece, but mm -hmm. we normally don't have big scraps left. Yes. Then we take uh, our ultra suede, and we cut a three to three and a quarter inch uh, circle. And then we're going, that becomes the bottom of our bag. Okay. So we're sewing it onto the piece. And we just sew in uh, with a quarter inch seam all the way around till it's attached. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Is that seam on the inside or the outside, the, the that'll, seam allowance? That'll be, there, we're sewing right sides together, so it will be, the seam will be on the inside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, when we're done with that portion, we're going to fold down about uh, half an inch from the top and that becomes our top edge here. And sew with monofilament, and that creates a nice top edge. And then we come down about an inch and a half and cut small uh, slits that we are then going to lace our cording oh, through. Good idea. You could use like a shoestring even or something. Mm -hmm. Is that what you use? Cording, whatever, oh, cording. whatever goes it. with. Yes, this uh -huh. is rat tail cord Oops. on that one. Oops, it's spinny. How pretty though. But that becomes our drawstring oh, uh, closure. You cut more slits in this one, so you just do it all the way down. All the way around. I see. I and get then it, it comes out to the edge. I so. get it. How pretty. Isn't that cute? Well, we had some other theme ideas, which I want to take a look at, because what a great idea. Really, you could do anything. Uh, if you have an embroidery machine, you could incorporate embroidery. I did some lettering on this uh, Joker is Wild version. Um, this is a jungle theme. I had some fun jungle uh, prints that all happen to be ultra suede and the earth tones. You could use a, a, a rawhide uh, drawstring for, for this version, kind of keeping the theme. Really, you could do anything you want uh, and base it on what the person's interest was. Yeah, for your gifts. Yes. What a perfect gift, because not only are you making them a bag, I'd be surprised just to get this beautiful bag, but to open it up and find my watch. Wow, it's a great gift. Thank you. You always have wonderful ideas. Thank, Thank you, Cindy. You. Let's see what Janie's up to. Today we have with us a wonderful continuous line pattern designer, Danita Burnett. Welcome, Danita. Hi, Janie. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I'd love to see what you have. All oh, these are beautiful. I've got all kinds of things to show. This was actually a Ugly Fabric Guild challenge. Of course, this was the ugly fabric, and we had to come up with something to do with it. And this actually won first place. Well, you made something really beautiful out Thank of it. Thank you. And are these patterns freehand? Yes, they are. Oh, they're gorgeous. It's all done freehanded. Did you have a title for it? No. It just no, won I, out I the didn't ugly name fabric this one challenge. the Ugly Fabric Challenge. <laughs> see, we could pull that one that way. And this one? This one was done for a friend of mine, Sue Vermelin. She actually pieced the top, but I quilted it for her. It's just uh, free-handed, and uh, I just uh, I thought the purple looked really good with the orange it since does. she had used the fabric. It's a little lavender thread in there. It makes a really nice contrast. Can we see it? Oh, you have a label. Wonderful well, label. Sue put the label on there. It was for her mother. Oh, it is beautiful. Wonderful designs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
This one, oh, look at the work on this. And it's all variegated thread. Yes, it is. Kind of pastel. This is all just freehand doodling. I made this in memory of my mother. Actually, this is the first one that I've ever entered in a fair, and it got a blue ribbon. And I was really proud of that. Look at the little dragonfly. It's got the little threads in the tail. How did you get those in there? You Actually, just, just twist just twist them around and couch over the top of it and then make his little wings. I think that's really interesting. I've seen a, a few little uh, dragonflies before, but I've never seen the little thread tail. That is beautiful. I learned that from a friend of mine. And this, now tell me a little bit about you because people just don't pick up and start quilting like this. What was your background? that made you be able to draw like this? Actually, before I was a quilter, I carved eggs. I carved eggshells with a dental drill. And it was very intricate, detailed work, little tiny patterns, and I guess it just rubbed off on the quilting. I guess, sure did. This one. This was a quilt made by my very good friend, Nancy Evans, and it's one of my patterns that I quilted on the top. This pattern is called Pagoda. It's a uh, kind of a, is it in reverse or is it stacked? Actually, they're stacked. Stacked and reversed. Mm, yes. This one. Oh, the colors in this one. I love the colors in I this know, one. I know. This beautiful. one was made by uh, Janice Bryant. And this is another one of my patterns. This pattern is called Bubbles. Oh, that's a fun name. You can probably see it better on the back. Yeah, let's look at that. So the row is actually, the continuous line row is here. Yes, it's a continuous so line pattern. It's reversed and staggered, the second row. Yes. That's a really unique technique to do that. And this one, you're working on this one. This is actually for Christmas. This is my poinsettia pattern. Very popular, it's one of the best sellers. One of these, uh, one of thing about this is I know the next row goes in and it makes it creates kind of a diagonal for you, doesn't it? Yes. Let's see one of those rows. Okay. She's actually following that pattern with a little red laser light. And her pattern is rolled out on the back of the tabletop here. And she's able to just trace with that little red light right over the paper pattern and her drawing while the needle is quilting that design up on top. It's just a wonderful way to pantograph. This is a machine, you might hear the variation in the motor because it has a motion sensor on it and it will go fast if she goes fast and it will slow down if she slows down. It's a very tedious, tiny little pattern that interlocks with itself. Oh, well, we can see how that goes. Oh, Danita, I just love how that looks. It is so Thank Christmassy, you. and you can always go back and touch up with a little bit of glitz with a oh, yes. little metallic thread metallic or something. Metallic thread. Now let's take a look at the quilt in its finished stage. I showed you snippets before, but not this easy Christmas project we're going to do today. When I first created the snippet uh, technique about 10 years ago, one of the things I realized right away is that it can be really easy for people of all skill level, and especially this project. Whether you think you're not artistic, you're going to be able to do this one. To get started, I need my pallets of fabric. I have a foundation, and it can be any size. 18 by 22, smaller, bigger, it doesn't matter, except that small is harder. So don't go really small, just have it a little bit larger than that. And then the next thing is selecting our fabrics. I think that printed fabric works the best, although people are scared of printed fabrics, but it really will give you a good result. And also another type of fabric is the monochromatics of a color family. So here I have green on green, and that gives me a lot better result than using solids. We're, we tend to want to use solids because we know what they're gonna, the result's going to be, but it's actually better to use the printed. 
The first thing we have to do once we selected our palette fabrics, and you can notice I have them all ravelly edges because these are just from my scrap bag. Don't even trim off the strings yet because you're going to do that when you put it on the fusible web. I love the double stick pressure sensitive web because it's fast and easy to use, but also because it's permanent. And to use this web, I'm just going to line up my, my different fabrics on it, set them on there. Oops, I'm going to get a little nicer. There we go. And just press them on down with the pressure of your hand. Line them all up on there. Pick your few. And then I trim them out on all four sides. Trim right into the fabric so that your fabric then will have clean edges and you don't have any shavings of glue. You don't want that. And I'm trimming off to the side because I don't want to get these scraps on my fabric. I've had them actually ironed to the wrong side. So you don't want to get them ironed or any mess and just keep your project neat. And here we actually have a piece that's pre-fused and ready to go. And that's right, pre-fused, because this web doesn't use an iron to pre-fuse, it's that pressure sensitive. And so I don't like to work with big pieces, so I'm going to cut a little bit of a smaller one. And before I actually cut snippets, I have to take off that back release paper. And if you cut a thousand little snippets with it on, you'll be visiting the trash can, I think. <laughs> it's quite hard to get the paper off little pieces. Now I'm ready to cut my snippets, and it's just this easy. You're not going to believe it, what I'm going to do. Now, it looks a little funny here. Oops, I got one that flipped over, so I'm going to flip him back. And I want to explain what I'm doing, because I know it looks funny. First off, when we cut, we tend to use the crook of our scissors, and I'm going to just use the tip of my scissors. Second off, when we cut, we always cut up here in the air. And I'm going to cut right down on the base, right, whoops, right here on the base. And so if I want to cover that dot right there, I just cover that area right there. Now that, whoops, and if it sticks to your scissor because it's warm, it's warm so it's sticking to my scissors, rock your hand and push it down in place. So I'm going to go ahead and rock my hand and push it in place so it doesn't stick to my scissors. And here's my first color. Now you're going to say, you're not even making a circle. Well, you know, if you don't start with a real circle, it actually works out better because if you start with a little circle, it's going to just stay a little tight circle. And I want my piece to be nice and wide right away from the start. Oops, I have a little scrap there. And here we go. And now I'm going to come in with my next colors and incorporate them. And you can see this is already starting to look like a wreath. If I want my pieces chunky, I just cut them chunky just like that right into it. Or I can cut long thin spears just by cutting spears. And if they're, the shape isn't really a shape, it's actually even better sometimes because we're just putting down color. And snippets is a way to paint with the fabric. So we're literally just putting down the color of it. And I'll show you here, if it's not round, you can turn the project upside down to make sure it's round. And if it's not filled in enough, at any time I could keep adding and just keep adding any little pieces here until it's nice and filled in just the way you want it. And then I find fabric that has little motifs on it. And actually I found some kitty fabric here that I liked, but there's some poinsettias and different flowers. And I find fabric that has little motifs on it, like these um, cardinals as such, put the web on the back of them and fussy cut them out and decorate your, your wreath with, with flowers or anything you want. And it's that simple. Make sure then at the end we're going to press it for uh, 15 seconds in each area. And we're going to press, not iron back and forth, instead of up and down 15 seconds. And then you can finish it off any way you want. Make it into a quilt, which I like to do, of course, or you can frame it or anything. And that's how easy your Christmas presents can be this year. Our guest, Carol Ingram, is going to show us how to make a beautiful pillow sham. Welcome, well, Carol. Thank you, Cindy. It's, you know, so much fun to come here and be with you, and we've got some really fun things that we're going to do today. You know, I, I've known you for quite a long time, and you are a wonderful designer. You design quilts and embroidery cards and just about everything. Yes, and the project I brought to you today is from one of my embroidery cards, oh. and it's a red work card, and I call it Home Sweet Home Red Work. And the quilt that you see on the wall behind us, I made from all of the designs on the on the red work card. And today, I decided I wanted to make a patchwork uh, pillow sham to go with that quilt. And I've chosen one design from that card. And I've decided to put this it, one. that one right there, yeah. yes. And I've decided to put it in the middle of a Battenberg lace so that it would be very romantic. And 
loving. So in other words, you can make a quilt for your room or your bedroom and then you're making pillows and you told me that you've made you made doilies for the, all these all different these things. All these other for, accessories. Yeah, it's well, good. this red work is really fun to do and I'm going to show you first how to apply it in the, with the embroidery machine onto the doily. You're going to take a regular doily and we're going to insert it into our hoop and then we're going to use a stabilizer that's a paper water soluble stabilizer okay. which means it's water soluble it's going to dissolve when we finish because traditional red work you can see the same red work on the back as you do the front so you don't want to see all that stabilizer you know that's mm -hmm. it's not nice looking on the you back. You need a stabilizer to embroider right. for sure. And red work designs are traditionally just line drawings anyway so it doesn't take a lot of stabilization but you need some. So what I've done is I've used our temporary spray adhesive I've sprayed the back of the hoop after I've uh, inserted my doily and then I've applied one piece of the water soluble stabilizer, inserted it in my embroidery hoop and ran the design and then I come up with this. I want to say that's a great idea because sometimes you can't get stabilizers off. You yes. can't pick and peel. And well, see, and this is great because it'll pull right off and then when you wash the doily, then it's all gone. And yeah. then when you turn it over, it's the same thing. Yeah, I've been using tweezers with yeah. the older type. So once it's prepared, then we're going to lay our doily aside and then we're going to assemble okay. our um, pillow sham. And as you can see, this paper stabilizer only comes in an eight and a half by 11, but our pillow sham is quite large. Okay. So I'm going to solve this problem by taking six pieces of this uh, paper stabilizer and I'm going to put six pieces together like so and, the, and then my pillow sham wow. is going to be, I'll get that, it's going to be this large, Okay. it's going to be like so and I'm going to do that by using a wash away tape oh, yeah, which that's... means it washes away also. You're going to strip the tape, pull the outer piece uh, off and then you're going to just overlap them like so. And most people aren't familiar with that but you can find that type of tape in any craft store or fabric store. You can stuff, find it in sewing. most all fabric stores yeah. and most chain stores. Yeah. And so then why we have our six pieces put together but for today what I've done is I've applied us a little smaller version so that our viewers can see it much better. A mini project. A mini project. Well I have the doily that I wanted to put in the center so I laid the doily down and I marked where the center bit was because, you know, you say, well, why don't you patch it just lay it on top? Well, this red is going to show through here, see, so I'm going to have to leave this open. Uh -huh. Great idea. So I've, I've started my patchwork and I've simply taken pieces of, uh, this is going to be crazy patch, I've taken pieces and sewn down my first piece and then I'm going to use the flip and sew method of paper piecing. Great I'm going idea. to put my straight seams together like so. I'm going to sew along that seam with my quarter inch, trim away any that's in the way so it doesn't show through, and then I'm going to flip it back and finger press. And then you can use a regular iron or one of those little mini irons, and then you're just going to continue sewing face to face in your flip and sew method. I notice on your palette of fabrics too that you have a, lot, a good variation of, of uh, densities, yes. lights and darks and mediums. That's, and uh, that's quite um, an interesting thing. You need to have extreme lights and extreme darks. Mm -hmm. You can have a lot of variety of patterns mm -hmm. and in this, in this instance I themed it around uh, love as you can see. And I would suggest that you start with at least five different fabrics mm -hmm. and maybe go up to seven or eight if your project's large enough. Yeah, and in the old days the crazy quilt projects were scraps of hundreds and hundreds. anything anything well, they know, had. Uh, some ladies do this crazy patch, they have a, 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 a mystery, they put it all in a paper bag and they just pick up whichever one that they want. They oh, reach down the idea. bag and get it and then that's whatever goes. You know? That's a cute but that idea. always made me nervous because nothing matched. <laughs> right. So then after we've had all of this patch, we're going to trim, you know, we can turn this over and we can trim the outside edge okay. and then we come up with what you have there. All right, this actually is what it looks like when you've uh, finished. Well, we still have the paper on the back. The good part about this, this is paper okay. and at all of the perf all of these stitched edges, it's a perforated line and you can pull this right away off. and it comes right off. But if any's left like that, when you wash it, it's gone. Yeah, and no you can more just tweezers leave it. picking out of all the little pieces. There. That's a great idea. So I love that tearaway stabilizer. That so after it's all torn away, then we're going to take a piece of batting, and then we're going to use another stabilizer. And this is a very soft I want sheer to move stabilizer. This just to show because okay. it's a real thin. See how soft and sheer and thin it is, okay. and it's a it's a non-woven, and it's what it's going to do. It's going to quilt this top. 
so that it'll be a, like a finished quilt, but you haven't used any fabric because this is going to be on the inside of your of your pillow. Right, sheet. so why use fabric? Right. And you just put the sandwich these and together you're with spray do, base. Again, you're going to use your spray adhesive okay. again, and, and you're going to want to hold your spray adhesive at least 10 inches away, and you know that it's heavier than air. So it's not going to fly all over everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use that to put the, th the three pieces together in your sandwich. Then you're going to insert, we're going to use cotton thread in this instance. And here we've got a 12 weight and we've got a 30 weight. Mm -hmm. And they come with different colored labels so you can recognize them. This is a heavier thread. We're going to put the t heavier on the top and we're going to put the 30 weight in the bobbin. Right, that would be the 12 on top because yeah, the, the heavy thread top. would show all these great right. stitches. And then we're just going to just go crazy and select any of our decorative stitches on our machine and we're going to stitch over all of our seams. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to apply our doily uh, in the circle in the center. And then you can see on the back side how nice this sandwich is it with the stabilizer on the back. That soft, very soft and mm -hmm. sheer stabilizer. And that'll be inside the pillows. And then there you've got your three layers of quilting and that acts as your quilt top. And sew it all together. Well, thanks for this great idea. And you know, my next red work, I'm not going to do it by hand. <laughs> I'm going to do it by machine. machine. With the beautiful yeah. thread. Yeah, that was really fast and great. Thanks, Carol. And I hope you enjoyed our show today. We'll see you next week. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Central is made possible in part by Jacquard Products, committed to meeting the needs of artists. Genomi America, Genomi, because you simply love to sew. Fairfield Processing Corporation, we care for your quilts. A1 Quilting Machines, A1, Precision Quilting Machines. OFA, the original rotary cutting system. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, books, and iron-on transfer pins. quilting in everyday living by offering you the new educational beginner kits. You may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or visit www.quiltcentraltv.com.